guys, Scott here from Outlaw Garage. We are back in YouTube car park. We actually, I don't think we've been here for a little while because we have been a little bit busy, but we are here with a Melbourne celebrity. We're here with Sal. We're here with Brutus as well, and we're gonna take a good tour of this car and there's a bit of a story to be told. So Sal, we've got your 911 here. It is, um, it has more of a, an older style kind of look about it. But that, there's a bit more to this. Yeah, yeah. It's a Australian delivered uh, 1978 SC. It's no sunroof. Year. Yeah, no sunroof. Uh, three litre. All the um, engine and uh, the motor is um, standard. Uh, I bought it after it had been backdated. I believe it was backdated about uh, 2006. Coincidentally, I know the guy who had backdated it and then the guy who bought it. They're great friends. I had a 911E. Uh, I sold it because I wanted something that I could drive every day and the E was becoming too precious. Uh, so I sold it, flew up to Queensland, bought this, drove it back to Melbourne and went back to work in two days. And uh, it's been to Adelaide and to Queensland and to Sydney three, four, five times. Uh, and it's just been uh, refreshed. Uh, so we'll talk about that later, We're I guess. Refreshed. We'll talk about that because there she sits. We have had the car kind of on the channel before with uh, some cars and coffee events and things yeah, like that. Yeah, in Elwood. This used to have a bare metal roof, um, but now that is all resolved. I didn't realize it was a non-sunroof car originally. Yeah, yeah, ordered, ordered without the sunroof. And the bare metal roof was an interesting story. Uh, I decided to put some stripes on the car myself at home in my garage. It was perfect. And then I noticed that there, it was half a millimeter out. So I, started removing it and then all of a sudden I heard a big crunch and all the, the paint came off. So uh, I was using um, Gibbs oil <laughs> to make sure it didn't rust for two years and then as you know I had a small bingle in the back here uh, and I decided to get the whole car painted by uh, Fairings, a good mate of mine. There we go. And it was probably more than a, well, I don't know when you got a little bit rear-ended it didn't look that bad yeah it wasn't that bad actually so uh, what it was was here okay uh, the fiberglass um, uh, rear bumper and my muffler and here so we fixed uh, that we panel beaded it yeah uh, we didn't buy any uh, new metal uh, this is uh, this is new yeah uh, and um, Shannon uh, old-fashioned panel beading and and painting there's absolutely no filler in it uh, we fixed any rust spots that we found uh, and she's uh, looking really good. And uh, I guess while the opportunity was there, you stripped it all back, yeah. repainted it, fixed up some bits of rust that I think we'll kind of talk about where an old SC or a backdate picks up some rust because yeah. we are experiencing yes. that ourselves at the moment. Uh, but uh, a full bare metal respray. Exactly right. Glass out, uh, new rubbers. Yeah. Uh, these are the hardest things ever to put in. Yeah. Uh, and expensive. This piece of rubber costs $175. I have no idea why. And they are a real pain to get in. That was a problem. The rear uh, was easy. The front was easy. Um, yeah, so um, it was it was a challenging uh, bit of work. Uh, and it took uh, nine months to go through insurance and uh, get the parts the parts are impossible to get these days. Yeah. The um, the bumper, interestingly, yeah. is made by an Aussie guy in Melbourne, uh, Mike Tankard. I believe he's retiring now, and he sold uh, the moulds uh, to Sharkworks. I believe uh, that was fun. And as you see, I've got the uh, the pea shooter um, Do cookie cutters. And we will do a bit of a <laughs> well. It'll be a cold start by the time we actually get to start the car, as we take some photos and things around here. But those that exhaust there yeah it's I, I think that's compliant with noise it's absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> it's it's i think uh, one of our buddies uh, uh measured it with his uh db meter and i think it's about 110 decibels which is totally illegal yeah. i've actually um got the m and k uh two in one out muffler being repaired by shannon he's an amazing okay. welder so uh to, to, to be legal, you really need that. Um, and plus, I can't hear the phone, uh, I can't hear the radio, I can't hear anything. Yeah, but it's such a cool look. They do look fantastic on there. I love them. I, I love the look. 
I think it really suits the car. It does, it does. This is a standard uh, 3.0 litre uh, engine. Yeah. Um, it's done, the car has done, I'm proud of this. It's done over 360,000 kilometers. 360? Yeah, but the motor was rebuilt at 289 uh, K. Yeah. Um, so it's less than 100,000. Uh, this thing is a, a little uh, thing I bought from Mike at Spider Automobiles just to make it look a little bit neater. Yeah. Um, it's got the Carrera uh, oil fed chain tensioners. Um, also got an oil cooler at the front. Uh, so you've had the chain tensioners upgraded then? Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, uh, we've got the um, the uh, oil fed, uh, the oil uh, cooler at the front. Yep. There. Uh, but it's actually not needed on these cars. Uh, it it's on a switch. It rarely ever comes on. Uh, the yeah, car, okay. car just does not overheat. An interesting little addition that I put in here. You see that little switch there? My, oh yeah. My ignition broke uh, a while back, a few years back, and I put a uh, remote starting switch so I can actually start the car from back there if I'm working on it. So it's so, a lot of fun. So just in case we've had some <laughs> problems. Exactly. Exactly. The fun part about this car is. Last time I weighed it, it was 990 kilograms. So uh, I've taken out all the ancillary bits. So as you can see, this came with air conditioning. Yeah. Uh, that's not there anymore. Um, Which is a reasonable weight because we've recently done that in ours. I think it, I think it's like 40 kilos. It's or something. over 40 kilograms. Yeah. And then interestingly, um, uh, I got into this lightness thing uh, because I wanted it to feel like one of the old cars. The, the SCs. Feel a bit more modern than the the 901 type car. I've seen people with this affliction before with lightness. It's addictive. <laughs> it's addictive. So I'll show you inside the car in a little while. But once I started that, I realised I wanted to try and make it really light. So I was actually weighing carpet and bits and pieces of stuff. And you'll see inside, uh, I um, uh, it was mouldy and musty. Yeah. Um, uh, because it's an old car. Um, so I decided I'm going to take the carpet out. When I took the carpet out, uh, I weighed it. The carpet itself weighed 10 kilograms. So then I saw the uh, all this stuff that they put there. It's like bitumen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's it's sort like of, tarry bitumen. It's tarry it? bitumen. Yeah. So I thought, hey, I'll be able to take this out on the weekend. Six months later, I got all the tar and uh, bitumen out. That weighed another 60 kilos. Wow. Which was nuts. And then uh, the standard exhaust um, weighs about 18 kilos. Um, and the M and K weighed six, these weigh two. <laughs> <laughs> it's because there's nothing to them. Nothing to them, there's nothing there. Uh, then the front, uh, the battery, the standard uh, Porsche 911 battery um, is about 17 kilos. I've got a full river Chinese, a copy of uh, uh, those Odyssey yeah. small batteries. Um, that weighs three kilos. Uh, so I did that. The seats. Uh, the seats are BF Torino Nürburgring um, seats and uh, they weigh about 8 kilos each. Um, so uh, the original seats I think like are 18 kilos. Yeah. Um, so the car from the factory I believe it was around 1200 kilos. So I've removed around 200 kilos. It feels really good. Oh. And by the way, um, as we know, the tank is 80 liters. Yes. I've actually gotten from uh, Melbourne to just the outskirts of Sydney on one tank. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 absolutely fantastic. You get on the freeway if you're doing if you're going legally 110 k's on the Hume Highway or whatever. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. But there's still a five speed, isn't it? It's a five speed. Yeah. So by the time you get into fifth, then you've dropped some weight and exactly yeah, it yeah, just yeah. coasts along. And speaking of five speed, I was devastatedly disappointed. Uh, when I um, uh, started working with the 915 gearbox, it was just sloshy and yep. so forth. And one of my friends said you should put a v Wevo shifter in it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, a bit of trivia: Wevo is made by an Australian guy uh, who lives in the US, has been living there, and he's quite famous for making Porsche parts. So I put the Wevo shifter in and the Somsky shift coupler in the back there. Yeah. And, and it's, it's tightened it up. It's has it? absolutely unbelievable. Feels like a modern gearbox. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're all the things I've done to it. I painted the wheels. I made the headlights uh, because uh, I've been staying in the country. You can't see anything. You're going to crash into kangaroos. Um, so I made some LED headlights uh, and uh, everything's beautiful.
I did think that this was GT Silver. Yeah. But it's not. No, it's not. It's a special order color. Uh, I think it was uh, one or two years only for the SCs. It's a VW color that Porsche offered. It's paint code 93693. Uh, and it's darker than Arctic Silver, or the silver they were offering at that point. Uh, and just a bit lighter than GT Silver. So this is the original um, factory uh, color. Of yeah. course, it was repainted, yeah. Yeah, wow. There we go. We'll try and get a, a few good shots of that because it is a bit of a unique color. We'll get one more side profile picture there. There we go. There she is, sat in all her glory. We're inside the car. This has had some modif... I love the seats, by the way. Yeah. The seats are fantastic. They're amazing. A bit in the back is missing. Yeah, yeah. So th this is probably the I'm lightening the car situation. <laughs> yeah. So what do we got here? Um, so basically, all the um, all the carpet and stuff. Oh, it literally goes carpet yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah exactly floor. right. And these are mats that I got from an Aussie guy here who makes them here in, in, in Victoria. Yeah. I've got all the uh, stuff for the back seats, the seat belts, but I really didn't want to give people lifts in the back. Yeah. So it's uh, absolutely fantastic. So what you see is what you get. This is exactly what it looks like from the factory. Um, and that's that also aids your, I can't listen to the stereo. Yeah, exactly. that exhaust, and that becomes like a drum lid, doesn't it's, it? It's basically yeah. a, a bass resonator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and then what else have I got here? This is, if I, I can tell you now, if you've got an old 911, this is the best thing you could ever do, which is the, the Wevo. Um, uh, gear lever mechanism and it's only this top bit the gear stick and some springs uh, and it's not cheap it's about a thousand bucks but you can install it yourself yeah. you use your existing old bits and the gear change changes uh, exponentially to the better and then I've got the Stomsky shift coupler here in the back yeah and these um, these uh, footboards I'm really happy with uh, they're made uh, by a New Zealand company and distributed by our mate uh, Alexander Pickering here in Australia. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, I've got that in here. Uh, I installed the uh, the Video Continental uh, radio like everyone does. Yeah. Uh, I listened to it once uh, to make sure it was working, <laughs> and now I can't hear anything. Uh, <laughs> Momo steering wheel. Uh, a standard addition to a 911. Exactly, but the happiest thing for me, I'm so happy with the paint job and stuff, was the old headliner was terrible. It was crunchy, crusty, and as Porsche people know, to put the put a new headliner in, you've got to take the windscreen out and uh, all sorts of stuff. So we did that, and I'm so happy. So we've got a now uh, a genuine German uh, black and it's tight. Uh, headliner, it? it's tight. It was. Yeah. Uh, I'm very, very happy with that. Other than that, just regular wear and tear. But this car, I would feel confident getting in and driving into Queensland now. Uh, it's been to Queensland uh, three or four times. It's been to Adelaide uh, four or five times, and we've done Luftwaffe and so yeah, forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know the usual issues, as you know. A couple of weeks ago, I had the uh, the fuel pump relay yep. in the uh, in the in the boot uh, in the front melt. Uh, replace those and uh, and they do just occasionally for a random reason just melt exactly exactly right experienced uh, that before exactly so you always have to carry a spare now I have a spare yeah a little tip for people if your red relay breaks uh, or melts use your horn relay to get you home because it'll work yeah uh, and then get a new red one well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put a GoPro in, yep. we'll go for a bit of a spin. We will get a cold start on this. Yep, no problem. <laughs> and see what people think of that. Excellent. <laughs> do you think you'd survive in a zombie apocalypse? I'd be a zombie so I'd survive forever. <laughs> Have you 
accidentally glued your hands together when doing arts and crafts? Oh, of course I have, and I've glued other bits together as well to my hands. That shifter is tight. It is fantastic. Put your hand on it, feel it. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, it's solid. That's a, that's a, a combination of that and the stop ski shift coupler in the yeah. back. Is the rumour true? You sleep with a cuddly toy. Yes. Because it's just not loud. It's got a bit of gurgle. Yes. There's a bit of throat to it. Yeah. It's not just volume. Yeah. When I first got those, I got those from a company called GT Racing in the US. Um, it's got the cookie cutters on the end. Yeah. Um, and they don't baffle anything. So I actually um, put some motorbike baffles uh, inside okay. and some yeah. steel wool. Before that, it was like 120 dB. It was just absolutely nuts. What's your favourite smell? Frangipani. Yeah, that's out of the sound. Have you ever peed in a swimming pool? Of course. See a police car? I put it in neutral and I go. Because this is a long drive, like drive to Sydney. I know. <laughs> That's another thing. Uh, when I was young, I really wanted a 911, and my whole life was based around getting a 911 because my uncle got a 930 turbo when I was a kid. And uh, I had just enough money to buy a 911, uh, but I didn't have any money for insurance, didn't have any money for stamp duty, didn't have, I only had the money for the car. And I nearly bought a 944, and Rob Raymer at Jeff Dutton's the late Rob Raymer, um, said, Sal, you've been coming in here since you were 17 and you've always wanted a 911, don't buy the 944 Yeah. because you won't be happy. Wait. So I waited another year and I bought a 911 from him. Uh, it was an SC, an 81 SC in Ruby. Yeah, okay. Uh, manual with the wing. Uh, that was an amazing car. Then I had a Carrera and so forth. But you got to buy the car that you want. Yeah. What? is the quickest way to get out of this video. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Banger! <laughs> well, there we go. We've caught up with Sal and Brutus and had a tour um, in the backdated 911 SC. Please give the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We have loads coming in 2023. So stay tuned and watch out for what's about to happen.